I was sitting in my office and a part of a verse of scripture went through my mind. It is expedient for you that I go away. And the word expedient triggered off the word urgent in my mind. And so I looked up the word urgent and expedient. Urgent, compelling, pressing action. Expedient, appropriate to the purpose. And so I said, all right. He says it's expedient for you that I go away. A compelling, pressing action that is appropriate to a purpose. And that brought out in my mind that Jesus said he came for a purpose. So tonight, I intend to show you that each and everything that Christ did and that happened to him were compelling, pressing actions appropriate to his purpose. Now let me show you what I mean. Turn to John and uh, chapter, I'll find it in a minute. Um, 13. These verses just started running through my mind. And uh, all the disciples were seated at a table with the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, Jesus says, one of y'all going to betray me. So they begin at once to say, uh, they passed it up the line and got to John, who was seated next to the Lord Jesus, and says, you ask him. And uh, <clears throat> they said, um, who's going to do that? Who, who of us would betray you? And Jesus said, I tell you what, we're eating, and when I take this piece of bread and put it in this gravy mix, I'm going to hand it to somebody, and that's the person. He hands it to Judas Iscariot. Verse 28. Now, no man at the table, that includes Judas, knew for what intent he spake this unto him. They didn't have the faintest idea that Judas was going to go out and betray Christ. Verse 29, some of them thought Judas had the money bag, so Jesus must have said go out and get some food for some people or whatever. And then Judas received that piece of bread and uh, immediately he went out. Look while I read verse 31. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified. The fact of Judas going out to betray him is a focal point of Jesus Christ being glorified. And so I took off on that and went to John 17. And in verse 4, <clears throat> we read Jesus saying to his Father, I have glorified thee on the earth. That is, I highly praised you. I honored you above all else, anyone, anything else. I esteemed you as the only 
were the one. And indeed he did esteem his father as so honorable. And so Jesus was intent. Now all this leads up to you. Jesus was intent that nothing would stop him from his course. And um, so in verse, chapter rather, chapter 18, they, um, decide that they're going to, um, defend Jesus. And in verse 37, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause, not another cause, not among many, this one alone, this cause, came I into the world. And so Christ says clearly, he came to highly extol his father by honoring his father's word in saving the elect. The father said, from the time of the fall forward, all the way through the book of Psalms, that he was going to save the elect, those that he chose from before eternity. And Jesus says, that's the cause that I came for, to honor my Father's word, to make his word, which he promised, come to pass, that these whom he has chosen be saved. And ain't nothing going to stop him from doing that very thing. And so we come back to John chapter 13 and verse 30. We see Judas went out. His betrayal was a necessary, mandatory, urgent, expedient step in such glorifying. I don't know whether you can see it. I don't know whether you can realize it or not. But the fact of Judas going out to betray Christ, glorified Christ. Because it, turn to Acts chapter uh, 1 or 2. I'll tell you when we get there. Chapter 2. Verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, yourselves should not know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. God, the Father, intended for Jesus Christ to be uh, delivered. <clears throat> and he could not come to finish his father's word by saving the elect until he's betrayed. So we come back to John chapter 13. And we see in verse 30, he went out. Therefore, when he was gone, the fact of his going, the Son of Man is now glorified. It was necessary for you. It was vital for you. Now this individual, Judas, had no choice in the matter. 
I read to you over in Acts, delivered by the determinant counsel of God. Look at Psalm 109. And I start reading in verse 6. Set thou a wicked man over him. That is, he's talking now about Judas. And he's talking about the Sanhedrin and all the rest. Let Satan stand at his right hand. Over there, read it in the gospel. Satan now entered into him. When he should be judged, let him be condemned. Let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few. Let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless, his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he had. Let the stranger spoil his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him. Neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Let his posterity be cut off and the generation following their name be blotted out. Let the iniquity of the fathers be remembered with the Lord and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be before the Lord continually that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. Because he hath remembered not to show mercy but persecuted the poor and the needy man that he might even slay the broken in heart. As he loved cursing, so let it come unto him. As he delighted not in blessing, so let it be far from him. As he clothed himself with cursing, like as with a garment, so let it come unto his bowels like water, and like oil into his bones. Let it be unto him as the garment which covereth him, and for a girdle wherewith he is girded continually. And so we see this son of perdition, as Judas is called, <clears throat> is the son chosen unto eternal ruin, destruction forever. I want to show you three passages of Scripture in the New Testament. Turn first to Acts and chapter 2. I read that a while ago. <clears throat> Him that is Judas. Christ, of course, delivered, but Judas is the one that delivered the. But he did this by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. Now look in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin be, re be, be revealed, the son of perdition. 1 John chapter 2. And verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would not, no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest, that they, they, they were not all of us. And so we see in these passages that Judas was the son of perdition. Yea, we could turn to 1 Peter chapter 2 and uh, other places and see that chosen unto perdition, chosen unto, yea, damnation. And now we come back to the Gospel of John and we see this precious statement in John 18 and verse 11. Now, <clears throat> Peter drew his sword out. He was going to protect the Lord <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's almost humorous. <laughs> and Jesus said in verse 11, Put up your sword into the sheath. The cup, or the locked, or the events in my life, 
my Father gave me, and shall I not drink or partake of it? This is what my Father has given me. You can see it in Isaiah 53. And should I not take it? Amen. Yes, he should. And with that, we come then to John 19, 30. And he says three little words. It is finished. Accomplished for you. Don't think for one moment that when Christ was going through all that he was going through, that he didn't have you in mind. He had you by name in mind. He knew your character. He knew for whom he was standing in. That's why he's called the mediator, the one to take the place of. And he took your place, accomplished death, for you that you not have to taste of death. And all these things in the life of Jesus, the mocking, the stupid trial, the false accusations, the bringing envy against him, and on and on we could go. All nothing but a bunch of lies. All were on purpose. And as they're accusing Jesus Christ in a most vile way, and watch out, they may do you the same way. He answered not a word, and you should not either. It was given them to say that about Christ, and they can't say it about you if it wasn't given for them to say it about you. Jesus Christ is sovereign over all things. <clears throat> Ever forever, there are echoes from Calvary. It's finished. And as you walk through this life, and as you blunder, and if you need to know how I ask me, because I've capitalized in it, there's still echoes from Calvary. It's finished. Just get your eyes back on Christ. It's all paid for. It's all paid for. Now, all of these things that happen in Christ's life were urgent. They were expedient. They were needed for Christ to come. Would you like to know one of the first words that historians say they said about Jesus? I'm going to tell you anyway. He didn't have a father. He must be a, what's the word? You guessed it. That's one of the first words they accused him of. <clears throat> All of these things were urgent and expedient in the life of Christ. For him to just live and display his righteousness. When he stood before Pilate and all the other dingalings, he answered them not a word. All of the stupid, idiotic accusations, he didn't even answer a word. So much that the governor was amazed that he said nothing. It was given Christ to suffer. Why? Because you deserved it. And he took your place. It was given for Christ to die. 
It was given for Christ to resurrect, and there's the hope of the believer. He resurrected, we too shall in him. It was given for him to minister after his resurrection, and that he did for 50 days. It was given for him to ascend back into glory. He's talking with his disciples 50 days hence. And as he's talking with them, he goes up out of their sight. It's given for him out of Hebrews to pray for his own, and he's praying for you. It's given for him to come for his own. I want this to be clear. If we all live until Christ returns, amen, he'll come for us, but you listen. If you go ahead of that, he still comes for his own. Songs of Solomon teaches. He goes down into his garden and gathers his own. He doesn't send an angel. That's false theology teaches you that. He himself brings each one home to himself. What a love. All of these things he went through to reign eternally. Everything that happened in his life had to take place. And you're no exception. So when these things come in your life, you look back at the life of the Lord Jesus Christ and you say, he went through this. There's your example. Go through it like he did. Mouth shut. Another amazing thing about the life of the Lord Jesus that blows my ever-loving mind. Look in Luke and chapter 9. And I begin reading in verse 30. <clears throat> Behold, they talked with Jesus Christ. Two men. Had somebody asked me very recently, do you reckon the Old Testament saints are in the grave and in some holding ground somewhere? No, that's false theology teaches that. Here you see Moses and Elijah in a form that they knew who they were, appeared in glory, and spake to Jesus Christ of his decease, which he should accomplish in Jerusalem. Batter that around in your mind for a while. The Lord of glory being ministered to by two, Moses and Elijah, about his decease when he would become you on the cross of Calvary. What a time. And so I ended this message with these thoughts. What a burden we were. What a delight we are. And what a Savior we have. Turn to Psalm 71. I want to read in closing verses 20 and 21. Thou which hast showed me great and sore troubles shalt quicken me again and shall bring me up from the depths of the earth. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Jesus Christ saying, you're the one, Father, that brought me through these things, brought me to these things and through these things. 
you're going to resurrect me again. And in and through that, you're going to shower this on your people through me. And in that, comfort Jesus Christ that his Father's word was made true by his work for us. That'll help you. I really believe that'll help you.